Nigeria, despite being categorized as a third world country, is very fast as adapting to technology and proof of this is the fact that they were the first set of Africans to buy the commercially available electric cars, the Tesla. Now, on 27th of May, Elon Musk tweeted, Starlink approved by Nigeria and Mozambique, in quotes, on Twitter. And I wasn't really surprised and I needed to gain a lot of traction and attention in Nigeria because Nigerians like good stuff. But then the million dollar question is, will this technology work well in Nigeria? Can people afford it? So in this video, we'll look at everything, how Starlink works to how much it costs to obtain one and whether this technology will work here in Nigeria. Let's get into this video. Starlink is a constellation of internet service providing satellites in low earth orbit. It's owned and maintained by Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX for short, which Elon Musk is the co-founder and CEO. Now, this technology promises to provide low latency, high speed internet to all parts of the world, including rural areas and places like over the sea where it's very difficult and expensive to lay fiber optic cables and other hardware that support the internet. To understand why this technology is great, you need to know how the traditional internet works. You see, the internet, despite being a global connection of computers and whatever they say, has a lot of hardware infrastructure supporting it, like servers, routers, radio towers, cell phone towers and more. Now, this traditional internet is very good in developed parts of the world, but in countries like Nigeria with so many rural areas, the problem of latency causes very slow or no internet. Now, latency, otherwise known as lag, refers to the delay in transmission from server computers to the client computers we use every day. Because there is inadequate distribution of this hardware infrastructure in rural areas, it takes so much time for data to get passed from these computers that are servers to the clients once we use, and hence, slow internet every day. With SpaceX Starlink, however, we are promised internet connection from multiple satellites in orbit as low as 500 kilometers above the sea level. This is better because there are no obstructions to the satellites in the sky and the hardware is sufficient for everyone. Now, what's more interesting is that the dish it comes with has the ability to reposition itself to face any satellite that is closer in orbit to give you better internet connection. So, let's take a look at the starter kit as unboxed by Linus Tech Tips on YouTube. So you're basically getting a dish, a router, some cables and a tripod stand to mount this dish. The technology this Starlink is using is very similar to that which cable companies such as DSTV and StarTimes use in Nigeria. And it basically means that Starlink is promising you uninterrupted internet as far as you have power. But there is a difference which makes it better. Starlink is giving unlimited data as far as you've paid your monthly subscription. There is no limit, not one terabyte or two terabytes. It's completely all you can use data, all for hundred dollars a month. Please, if you're enjoying this video or it's informative, subscribe to the channel, just the red button down there. I'm trying my best to keep you guys informed, so please, I deserve your sub. Thank you. But how would this technology fare in Nigeria and will the average man be able to use it? To answer these questions, we need to check how much it costs to obtain Starlink. Now let's go to their website. On their website, you're going to see there's a one-time payable fee of $599 or $600, which is about 310,000 Naira just once to obtain this hardware. And after that, you pay a $100 monthly subscription fee or 60 to 63,000 Naira a month. Now, to be honest, these figures aren't really friendly to the average Nigeria. But let's say for instance that the $599 isn't a problem. Anyone willing to pay $100 a month for internet has to be earning at least $1,000 a month, which is way above average income in Nigeria. And this person has to really need the internet for his work. That is either someone who is working in tech or maybe just a rich dude or very rich family. But please, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Do you think $100 is too much or just right for what Starlink is offering based on the Nigerian financial standards?
Let's forget the fact that Nigerian politics influences almost everything in the country and look at the effect of Starlink or regular internet service providers already like MTN, Airtel, Etisalat and Glue. I read some articles online suggesting that these internet service providers are in panic as Starlink service may actually outcompete them. Well, that is true in the long run because SpaceX president recently announced that the prices would drop in the subsequent coming years and they could lose their high paying subscribers to the Starlink service. But in my own opinion, the cable TV companies should actually be even more scared because Starlink could actually incorporate more services into their internet services such as streaming or cable TV. And if this comes at no extra cost or just a few tens of dollars, that's a deal breaker. They are like they are going to lose all their customers and Starlink will basically take over their market. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment sections. I would love to know. I'm actually happy they are panicking because competition is what drives innovation. I mean, it could make them step down the prices of their data services in Nigeria. At least for those of us who can afford Starlink before we later ditch them and go inevitably to Starlink service. Let's look on the bright side. If this technology were made affordable and accessible to the average Nigerian man, it's going to be game changing. From streaming, gaming and basically doing anything on the internet, it's going to be faster, more accessible and more reliable. That is, let's take the power holding companies out of the equation first of all. So I think that's basically going to be better. But for now, I think basically people with higher earning income, higher income are in tech or politicians or people who run private businesses will actually benefit from this service now because most of them actually run generators. Let me know what you guys think about everything I've said in this video in the comments. Share this video to someone who needs it and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.